How's it going guys? Cheese here at Cheese on Everything and today is going to be a fun day of unboxing because what I have in front of me are all the accessories for the one wheel pint. So let's start off with the smallest thing first. We have the power plug cap. This is to prevent dirt and dust from getting into the power port. As you all know the one wheel is made for off-roading so you might get into a lot of dusty and dirty muddy areas. So this is vital if you want to keep that port clean. Second we have the bearing covers. As you can see, I'm going for a red, white, and black theme. Comes with a grease tube and a bunch of Q-tips for you to clean the bearing before you put these on. Next up, we have a hot commodity, the Kush Nug High. This is the rear pad for your pint to make it a bit more comfortable. Straight away, I can tell that this is a lot softer than the stock pad, and it's also a lot more rough. The uh, sandpaper on here provide a lot more grip for your shoes. I never had really too much of a problem uh, with sliding on my stock pads, but this is definitely gonna get you a lot more grip. If you're ordering the Kushnuk High, consider buying the same grip tape for the front too, so it has a more even feel. Next up, we got the Fangs, which was also a very high commodity. It took me about a month to get this in stock. Comes with the wheels and bearings and all the accessories that you need to put it all together. Next, we have the float plate which is like a skid plate for your car. So it protects the underbody of the one wheel. Let's open this up. And of course I had to order it in red. That is what it looks like. Almost feels like plexiglass. And last but not least, we have the most exciting box to open. This is the flight fins. I opted for the plexiglass cover. Obviously, uh, you just have to peel this off. It's not white. Every single accessory comes with a little bag of stickers, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna probably be sticking this all along the sides of the rails. But let's get on with the install. Got here an Amazon tool set, which has every single bit that you possibly need. First things first, let's put together the fangs because that comes disassembled. All you gotta do is snap the bearings into the wheels. Smash the little bearings in. Comes with two of these screws. So I found that the easiest way is to just line up the spacer on top of the wheel and just slide it in. And then you can just put the screw in from the inside. Nice and smooth. Gotta take off the front lower fender. These do require a bit of force. So just be careful when you're unscrewing these not to strip anything. The two front and the two back on the front plate are the same and the middle two screws are long. So for this I would recommend uh, either a small pry bar or a screwdriver. Use the tire as leverage and then just push a little bit and it will come out. So you gotta slide this piece all the way out and there you go. So all you gotta do is use the front edge and just smash it down on the carpet. If you have something soft, a little bit of force, it will go in all the way. So I'm running into my first problem, which is the stock uh, rail guards from one wheel. They wrap around the rail. And so now the plastic is in the way of the skid plate. I am going to have to cut a bit of the rail off the bottom. Now you don't need to cut it all the way through. You just need to score it hard enough that you can peel it. Just make sure when you're cutting this to watch your fingers because this tape is really strong. Now for those who don't have the side rails yet, I would suggest getting the float rails because those don't wrap onto the bottom. That's if you are planning on getting the skid plate. So kind of have to plan yourself out for accessories so you don't buy doubles of things or have to modify it like I am doing right now. 
For anyone who's deciding to get the original pint side rails though, they have been doing pretty good. Like my board is completely unscathed after almost two months of use and it's still super clean. So in order to install the skid plate, you also got to take off the two rear screws. They do provide you with uh, new screws because this plate does add about a quarter of an inch uh, of height to all those screws. So make sure you use the new screws that they give you. Now because this plate is a, about a quarter of an inch, you do lose a little bit of clearance on the board. But I think this protection is worth the sacrifice for the a little bit of ride height loss. So I'm noticing a little bit of an issue with clearance here. The skid plate's coming pretty close to the wheels. They don't touch, but I think if you do a nose grind that the skid plate is going to interfere with the rough roads. So we're going to have to test that out later. I'm going to install everything else first. So in order to install the Krishna Kai, you also need to unscrew the same two screws for the skid plate and the two extra ones from the back. Bunch of stuff installed now. So we got the Krishna Kai, the red skid plate and the fangs in the front. And this looks like a much nicer pad. It's a lot wider. So in order to take off the front grip tape, make sure you peel the right layer because there's two layers under here. One is for the sensor and one is for the tape itself. So I started a little bit already just to get things going. Try to peel it sideways so it doesn't uh, take off a lot of the glue. So with the extra residue that's on here, Get yourself some Goo Gone. You can buy this at your local hardware store. It uses a citrus solution, so it's pretty safe on all types of surfaces. So after you clean off all the glue on the sensor pad, just make sure that you give it a clean wipe with a slightly damp paper towel. Make sure all the citrus solution is off because that solution makes everything not stick. Easiest way is to just peel off one corner, match it up. And there we go, we got a new set of grip pads. So next up we got the flight fins which use the same screw holes as the Kushna Kai and part of the fender to install these wings. If you haven't bought a pint already and you feel like you are going to get these flight fins, uh, you can save yourself a bunch of money by not buying this fender. It's kind of like practicality versus looks. Because on the one hand the pint fender is very practical, you can actually sit on it and use it as a seat. It's a lot more durable. The flight fin fender is a piece of clear plexiglass, which will look a lot cooler, but then you can't sit on it. So let me install the transparent fender first to see what it looks like. I think it, it will look a lot better. I write goofy, so these are directional. Uh, you can put them either this way or put the other one on the back, which, which makes it regular. So since I am riding goofy, then I need to put the flight fins on this way. So the flight fins do come with two sets of screws. Just make sure that the longer ones are on the top and the shorter ones are on the bottom. One thing I did notice is uh, you got to be really careful while tightening these screws. You don't want to over tighten them. Because these are rubber, if you over tighten them, the screw head does go through the rubber. So make, make sure that when you tighten it up, that just the head of the screw is just sticking out a little bit. And the same applies with the top screws because you're putting on an extra piece. You got to use their hardware, which are slightly longer screws to put on the flight fins. So I just went ahead and installed the other side of the flight fin because it's the same thing on both sides. Four screws on the rubber, four screws on the board. And now all we got to do is put on this plexiglass. There are, I don't know if you can see the plexiglass is really clear. There are three notches right here. Oh, I can use the light. Three notches on both sides. And you just bend it and slide it into the slots. Feels like I'm breaking it, but. All right, slide that in there. And there we go. Ooh, it does look good. Pretty cool. I might actually just keep this fender because it looks so good. Now because the flight fin is right on top of the battery light, it is blocked a little bit as you can see. You can't see it anymore from the top. But they did make a revision to direct the light a little bit to the front. 
which I find it's, it is a nice touch because that light is really bright. I actually wish that the battery light was the front LEDs because those could use a low brightening up. But nonetheless, the battery LED and the sensor pads are still fairly visible. You just tilt your head a little bit, you can still see the battery lights and the sensors. One big feature of the fangs is now that you have a front handle, just like you do on the XR. And same goes with the float plate. This handle isn't as nice, but it's good to know that you do have that option. I was actually thinking of installing the float plate backwards because you can do it. You just gotta drill two extra holes and you can flip this plate around and that way you have a handle for the back. One more thing we gotta do is put on the bearing covers. This is a little hard to see, but all you gotta do is take the Q-tip and clean the bearings as much as you can. They do give you a bunch, so use it sparingly. I think if you were to just get one mod, the bearing covers is definitely the mod that I would get. Uh, as you can see, the bearings do get really dirty really fast. Uh, I ride in urban situations most of the time and it's still that dirty. So if you do any mud or dirt trails, it will get a lot more dirtier than this. It will also help with the waterproofing of the electronics inside this wheel because the motor and a lot of the electronics is actually inside here. So putting an extra seal on it, even if you go through those wet rainy puddles, you wouldn't have to worry. Squeeze a bunch of grease into this groove over here, nice and slow. Now this bearing cover is cut open, so you don't have to worry about taking everything apart. So you just stretch this over, push one side in, and then rotate the wheel around as you push the ring in so that the opening is now on the outside. And then you can pull a little bit off and then rework the rest of it back in. One last finishing touch, the power plug. And there we go, every mod except for tires and bearings onto the one wheel pint. And I think it looks freaking awesome. Matches the whole black, red and white scheme. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And until the next one, peace.